that doesn't happen by accident. I don't know, man. If I'll, I'll do whatever's fun. Cause I stay away from as much trauma as possible. Yeah. Fun. Next thing you know, I'm like interviewing Stan Wood. I would put my hand up his ass. Guys, my name is Ted Darklaw, and with me, as always, is the Black Knight. We are the co-owners of HellaDopeToys.com, where you can go buy really cool toys and uh, action figures. Aaron. Yes, sir. How the hell are you doing? I'm all right, man. I uh, had, uh, had a good dinner. Uh, I got me a tasty beverage, and uh, yeah, you know, shit. That is incredibly fascinating. Thank I know you for sharing. I know. I uh, I came with that all by myself. <laughs> no Very ghost impressive. writers, no nothing. Wow, you wrote that all by yourself. I Very did. impressive. Very impressive. I, mean, uh, I, I went through eight things of paper. Mm -hmm. I guess mm -hmm. got it. Yeah. Uh, how the hell you been, man? Dude, I uh I had a week. Um, I had a weekend. I went to a rock show. Uh, I know, terrible, I'm so jelly. oh, terrible life choice, dude. I really actually thought I died on the way there and went to hell. Um, <laughs> forty dollars to park, three miles to walk there from the park. Forty dollars to park. Forty dollars to park, oh, my yeah. friend. Yeah, and then know. you know how they have those metal gates. You know, it, it's good for lines. You know, you go back and forth, and back and forth, and back and yeah. forth. Uh, ten rows of that. Uh, and each row got thinner and thinner and thinner. Fifteen dollars for a beer. Um, had some situations with some crowd surfers. Uh, mainly the three hundred pound woman who came flying at my head. And the options were: Do I let her fall, or do I just grab a handful of that ass? Um, I mean, I had to go for a handful of that ass. I went for the handful of that ass, and I did not enjoy a second of it, my friend. <laughs> um and then i almost went down with her so here i am just just trying my damnedest i'm not as strong as i used to be but uh me and another guy we were able to just ollie ooper so yeah special guest tonight big time youtuber in fact based off of our previous guests i think he's actually in the top five of subscribers for uh guests that we've had on the show as in um he has the most. He has the most. Uh, before we before we bring our strange guest on, uh, Mr. Largo of Largo's Lair was asking, uh, "Will Kato be appearing in the swanky smoking jacket?" Uh, last I saw, he was naked. So, yes, he he did show us the Johnson four or five times. <laughs> He's like, um, "Hey guys, look at this." He is a cast member of Action Force, uh, indie toy god. Let's welcome. It's Kato. It's Kato. Kato, how the hell are you doing? And you are muted. <laughs> what? Did I'm sorry. It was so it's so noisy on this island. I'm trying. <laughs> I came here for vacation. I was trying to relax, get some sun, and I get here, and like everybody starts leaving. I've seen at least six hundred people. Climbing on like this boat and that pirate ship and hauling ass, and this guy right here is up here trying to steal people's stuff up here on the top mm. of this sign. It's a weird place, man. He's but probably trying to steal the sign. Yeah, before long, I'm just going to have the whole place to myself. That is I mean, wild. It must. It's uh, a very smell, strange island. I don't smell know. really bad there. I'm guessing. Uh, Greg says that uh, Kato is busy trying to find his Hugh Hefner robe. <laughs> <clears throat> no, I was. I, Showing my wiener to these two guys trying to get dressed. It was it was a weird night. We were, we were quite intrigued. Let me get this this background. I love this background, but it's starting to like give me a headache because it's all jacked up. Because I don't have an actual green screen. Uh, you know, 
There we go. Let's uh, let's get back to normal. Let's fast forward to the to home. Normal people. That's <laughs> right. That's right. So, uh, Cato, how are you tonight, sir? Thank you for joining us. Doing well, man. If I was any better, I'd be twins. <laughs> and we've got uh, the Titan. Uh, hail to the collective. Now, that sounds too much like a Michigan thing. I'm just not feeling that. As you were saying that, I thought Kato was doing some like dab gang sign. Yeah. I was like, "Shit, do I not know? Is there a thing?" The coolest thing I've ever done, done right there. I'm only about ten years late, but it's the coolest thing I've ever done. I mean, everything's vintage, man. Everything comes back every once in a while. You, you, you just ahead. Titan from... has uh, taken it upon himself to to uh, call my subscribers the collective. I love that, and now I now... do too. I do too, but I can't have him calling them Cato's Collection Collective. That logo will not fly on a shirt. Yeah. No. Well, the I don't know got why. To be, it's weird. Right? I don't yeah. He got to be part of the new, the new, hold on, fuck, the Cato, the Collective <clears throat> hand sign. That's just, that's just me deflecting a cough and muting my microphone. But <laughs> I, from now on, when I cough, I'm just going to be, you know. <laughs> So for people who don't know you, and I doubt anybody in here may not know you, uh, we, I think we, we share the same circle and a lot of our crowd probably came from somewhere from you or in the same circle, but uh, do you want to tell the people who you are and what you do on the YouTubes? Uh, I am Cato. So says the weird purple bar right there. <laughs> uh, I do. I started out doing mostly Transformers videos. Uh, right around the time when uh, War for Cybertron, the Netflix figures were coming out, I started the channel, moved into Classified once those launched sometime later, and then <clears throat> dipped my toe into third-party Transformers, and that's mostly where things led for quite a few years. And I don't even know how long I've been doing it, five or six years now, I don't know, uh, five years. But uh, now I do, I try to focus mostly on uh, third party and indie toys, Kickstarters, you know, your, your typical indie stuff, Spiro, Action Force, Mythic Legions every once in a while, which I want to ask you guys about uh, soon. See if, um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, I do a lot of fun stuff, mostly uh, um, independent stuff now. Um, I don't know, man, if I'll, I'll do whatever's fun. It's fun. And, I have a good time doing it. I'll do it. You said uh, Transformers was like your gateway toy drug before you hit the the indies. Um, yeah, so like um, the whole the whole like I'll give you the Cliff Notes version. I was working at a spot um, doing basically two jobs. One that was more <laughs> involved than another. Ended up getting another job somewhere. Um, I, I used to live down at uh, down in Myrtle Beach. Uh, I can say that now because I'm not there anymore. So good luck finding me, fuckers. Um, uh, I was down there in Myrtle Beach. We had a big hurricane. We evacuated. Came back. The place I was, like the local place I was working, uh, shut down. It was actually a moonshine distillery. So I was down there. Uh, I was the guy behind the bar, like doing the uh, the, hey, making fun of people, doing the fun demos, try the sample stuff, you know. We had a lot of fun. Allowed me to be a real smart ass, and I loved it. But they shut down, and then I was like, I don't know what the hell I'm going to do. I've got, I need something to fill in the gaps of this other job I'm doing, and uh, I just couldn't find anything. So I did what every wise over forty person would do, and said, Why not start a YouTube channel and buy toys with the money that I'm not making at a job? So, and right around that time. Uh, War for Cybertron was coming out and, you know, Transformers was getting a, a little bit of a, a little play. And I bought stuff here and there whenever I found interesting. But, yeah, I, I was like, ah, it'd be a good time to do it. And the wife was super supportive. She was like, go for it. Um, she eventually started her own channel and it's way more successful than mine. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's uh, that, that's kind of how I got the ball rolling. Met a lot of cool folks. So shout out to Larkin's Lair, Inu Tabi, Sardo New Spade, to Patriot Prime, all those guys that, you know, that I got that the deluxe ball when all, all those guys, I'm going to run them as primal. I can name everybody, but got in that, that little circle with them or 
Um, Inu Tabi and Larkin's Lair and Sardo News by 82, all great people. We started right around the same time. So we kind of got to got to know each other in that same starting uh, starting time. So that's how that's how I got started. Then, you know, I got fun. Next thing you know, I'm like interviewing Stan Bush and Bobby Valla and talking to all these cool ass people like y'all. And you know, Stop. and that's what that's what's fun about it. That to me, this I've got to do more of this because this is to me way more fun than reviewing a pig. No, mm. nobody needs to. Re- Listen, I'm saying this on behalf of myself. Nobody needs figure reviews anymore. I do it all the time, but I do it because it's fun. Like, it's just, I, I don't know. I enjoy doing it, so I keep doing it. So I, I, I like the interviews and the hanging out with folks and meeting new people and stuff like that. You you forgot from a safe part, distance where you became a, a comic book character in oh, Action yeah. Force I, made by I, Quentin J. Did, Bidwell. I did become a comic. Actually, I also. became an action figure oh that's very Ooh. cool that very cool. nice so you're at roughly 10k subscribers right now and i know you've been at this for a few years but i feel like getting to 10k and i mean you're just you're just on the cusp we're not quite 10k yet but like you're a you're a fart away from 10k a, i mean like a just a silent little squeaky part yeah, yeah a little a little away yep, from 10k that's, that's the one um and I, I feel like that doesn't happen by accident. Was there ever any strategy or planning or design to get into to where you are now with the channel? Or were you just like, I don't know why people keep showing up? <laughs> I, I don't know why people keep showing up. And, you know, it's it's I'll, I'll tell you right now, for the most part, the YouTube algorithm is not super friendly to uh, uh, to like toy reviewers anyway. There's no like category for us to to chime in on YouTube for it to push everything through. So it's really just a you know a lot of it is luck of the draw, and if people even give a shit about watching what you do, I mean, <clears throat> I've gone through the same things that most people have. Like I hate this shit. I'm gonna stop. To I'm never gonna stop doing this. I'm not gonna let them run me off. And it's it's the roller coaster ride of caring about the subs. I used to be pretty uh caught up in like looking at social blade to see how the channel's doing looking at uh, my stats to see am i up or am i down oh no i lost three subs or i gained five or whatever i honestly like i'll look at the views and stuff and that'll get on my nerves because i know the algorithm is like yeah fuck that guy but uh i mean i always end up going back to if i'm if i'm having fun doing it i'm gonna do whatever you know, and, until I get, till I have to stop. I don't know. You know, when I'm obviously, I probably won't be doing YouTube until I'm 70, 80 years old. Fuck, I don't even know if I'm a, you know, be here at 70, 80 years old. You know, this might be the last time you see me. It's not this. If something happens to me, I didn't do it. I didn't remember remember me. That. I'm happy. Everything's fine. Well, but, articulated uh, ninjas already booked for eulogies, so you're gonna have to yeah, yeah. get somebody else. <laughs> Yeah. That was fun. Did you guys were you guys on the stream with him? Uh, he messaged me after uh, after it was over, cracking up. I told him I was going to steal his song, put my logo on it, and then <laughs> copyright. Do you get when you're a liar and weak? Me. Who doesn't know the meaning of accountability? I deal with the real world every damn day. Once I get on here, I try to just have fun with toys. I don't get into uh, get into that nonsense. Uh, as I stay away from as much trauma as possible. Again, unless you know, you start taking my friend's channels down. Everybody has something going, even this dickhead, he has something going on in his life that he has to worry about every day, right? I'm not standing up for the guy at all, but he has a real life that he's got to live outside of this of his channel, right? I, mean, I wish yeah. more people thought like that. Like, Does don't he? let this shit get to you. I don't know. I don't, he probably doesn't. He's probably <laughs> jerking it to, he's probably yanking it to uh, analog toys videos. Like, he's talking about me. <laughs> and, uh, yes. <laughs> But uh, I don't. Know. I'm just saying, like, there's enough real world stuff out there to 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 complicate things outside of this. I come here to hang out and chill out with friends. Now, when you start trying to remove friends from their, you know, in in essence, their livelihood, people make money off this. Some people do, apparently. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know. like, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. 
you, you can't always have your head in the sand and just kind of look the other way. Sometimes you got to at least say something. And then there's people like Tony who just now there's nothing left to say. If if I looked up Tony uh, analog toys and found, I was like, who's this Australian fucker talking shit about me? And, you know, you start digging in, you're like, maybe I just need to shut up. And let him do <laughs> say whatever he wants. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hit that delete button, my bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're in the middle of typing some angry shit to Tony. Like, you fucking Australian yep. piece of shit. And then, like, a picture comes up of who you're talking about. And it's like, a uh, mm. great channel. Uh, <laughs> subscribe, like, share. Have a good day. Yep. If you're if you're fresh out of places to go for GI Joe news because you're jumping ship, uh, Inu Tabi is a great place to go. Keep that in mind. Uh, our good friend Just Jeff, uh, Kato once wrestled a Loch Ness monster while all, while holding a jug of shine and smoking a cigar. I got news for you: we weren't wrestling. Uh, Largo's Lair says, "Kato, uh, you prefer Apple Jack, uh, corn liquor, stump water, skull cracker, wildcat, or ruckus juice?" Corn, corn liquor, man. Moonshine. I'm, I am literally like maybe twenty minutes away where Popcorn Sutton uh, made his brew. So yeah, I, I prefer. Now I do like the the very cheesy like Tennessee uh, flavored moonshine. I think it tastes good, uh, and I like to drink what tastes good. But yes, I, I I prefer if I'm going to drink straight shine, it's going to be just white corn, blue flame moonshine. I'm I'm looking at this, and it sounds like Largo's like Joe Dirt listing off firecrackers. And I'm like, <laughs> what is you got the whiskey chasers. You look yeah. Yeah, like, right. like when I saw when I saw the the comment the first time, I had to go back and I'm like, ruckus juice. I love that. Now I go, I want to go watch Joe Dirt. He's like, whiskey chasers, you who's for do's, you who's for don't. Tell me you don't have no whistling bungholes, no spleen splitters, whisker biscuits, honky lighters, who's for do's, who's for don't. Uh, Kato, there's a question here for you. I mean, what I'm gonna is? alter, I'm gonna alter the question because obviously there's only one answer to this. He says, uh, what Transformer character is your favorite, and what Transformer figure or toy is your favorite, and why is it Starscream? Uh, it's not Starscream. My favorite character uh, let's, is Sunstreaker. Next, uh, next guess, please. <laughs> right there. I have my little Sunstreaker uh, uh, shelf right there. Uh, it was the first Transformer I ever had when I was, what, I don't know, nine years old or something like that. Got it for my birthday. Uh, so yeah, Sunstreaker is definitely my favorite just because it was he was the first bot I ever got. But my favorite Transformer that I have in the collection is this guy right here. This is easily the most fun Transformer and the coolest one that I bought. Wow, and cool it, I, I just keep going back to making this one uh, just the best. It's it's actually it's. Uh, Essentially, Rolling Thunder from GI Joe. If Rolling Thunder was Optimus Prime, huh. uh, TFC Toys. I forget what their third party name is, but uh, yeah, this they've got like five different versions of this guy. But yeah, this this like camo Optimus Prime Rolling Thunder is easily uh, my. It's still my. So, and the Megatron is like a close second. The Megatron is a fucking monster. I was scrolling through the, uh, the Instagram a while ago, and um, somebody had a picture of an Optimus Prime, and it intrigued me. So I messaged them. I'm like, "Hey, you know, what is this?" And I, I, it, I might I might be saying it wrong. It's like a uh, black. It's a black apple or like black. Oh candy. yeah, the black apple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it is black apple. Like that. That Optimus Prime would. I. I. If I had a grand just sitting around right now, I would have. I would buy it. But then I had to I think it is black. when I spent a thousand dollars on an Optimus Prime figure. Yeah, this this Megatron is a close second because he's basically Destro's. Uh, oh, what is it, Inutabi? You'll remember. But yeah, this this guy is made by TFC Toys as well. Mm. See, he's got his Cobra Commander mask on. Oh, that's, that's beautiful. Yeah, this this is a oh, yeah, killer like killer set of figures. So highly recommend. The most trusted puppet in news. Sam the Newsman has come to join us. You talk about another good dude. I would put my hand up his ass any day. <laughs> Every once in a while, Sam will grace me with a, 
uh, an opportunity to call in and uh, talk about some stuff. He has a, if if you're not it got everyone seriously. There's what it was like 40, 50 people watching this right now. Yep. Go download what's what's the name of the app, Sam? It's live. Uh, oh my gosh, I'm gonna let me see what it live three sixty five. So download the this is just sheer bullshit placement for a really cool dude. Um, live three sixty five radio app every Saturday morning. Sam does a radio show, and it is an amazing show of almost entirely uh, 80s, 90s cartoon music theme songs. So it's reliving your 80s and 90s cartoon Saturday mornings uh, through the radio. It's nothing but theme songs and uh, puppet. Oh, <laughs> that's it. That's the one. Only puppets. And it's great. And then he'll he'll do like inter, like during intermissions. He'll do live streams on uh, YouTube and stuff like that. And, and, but yeah, it's it's a great uh, you know couple three hours of just some of the most memorable theme songs. Uh, and he'll have a call in. Um, it's live three sixty five, and the station is uh, WDCE ninety point one FM. So yeah. definitely do everyone do that and listen to Sam every Saturday. If I'm out and about, it's streaming in the car, and I'm listening to Sam uh, and some old cartoon theme songs. All good. Yeah, uh, he was he he was streaming on Instagram, and that's where I would uh, catch him. So knowing yeah. another place to go watch it, and apparently Sam is um, you know, battling free speech and platforms and whatnot because they keep canceling his lives. Um, but Sam, keep keep fighting the good fight, man. And, uh, now that we know there's another way to check you out, I will be all over that. Yeah. He, he even does take, he does TikTok, YouTube. I catch him normally on YouTube. Uh, mm. and it's, I think it's just at Sam newsman on YouTube from the most trusted puppet and media reporting since Roswell. I'm Sam newsman. And this is Saturday morning. Okay. So you, you just released a video, uh, well, I guess it was a live stream, maybe, you and Inutabi talking about um, no longer doing the Animal Warriors of the oh, Kingdom yeah, podcast, yeah. that you're rebranding <laughs> the whole thing. Yeah, it, it was getting tough to where they're just, I mean, when the when the Kickstarter's out and there's a lot, lots of news, right? It's a lot easier to do a dedicated show to a brand. And I was talking to Jason and the guys there, and I was just like, I don't, I don't think that there's enough constant content to have a dedicated facebook and stuff like and i mean you've got folks like uh highly articulated and brick that do great shows and they they're employed by by spiro they're going to get the news before anyone else and it's, it's like i either have if, if inu tabi and i put together a show it's probably going to be information that we grabbed from their show anyway so just go watch their show and we decided to rebrand the Facebook page and the podcast. It's not really a podcast. It's just a, just like this, you know, yeah. just sounds cooler. But it's something. uh, it's, we it's just the it's news, independent toy scene news. So it'll just be we just rebranded it to. And Jason uh, was part of that process. And what we'll what we will do is while highly articulated and brick. Uh, Brick something do most of the news uh, for Spiro and have Jason on there for that. What what either Tommy and I will probably do is we're just going to turn it around and have like maybe once or twice a month do a show with Jason and Derek, and Eddie, and the folks from Spiro and just hang out, you know, and let them be not have to talk business for a little bit and just talk toys and what's cool and you know give them a break from a walk for a little bit, unless there is some, some news to share. But yeah. It's, it was just something that <clears throat> it was just a way to get some more content. And I think it's working. I think the, I think we lost a few that were probably there just for a walk stuff. And that, I expected that. Uh, but uh, it's, it's bouncing back to where folks are now interacting, asking about things like mythic legions and, you know, uh, Oh man, there's so much cool stuff coming out. Uh, Legendary. I don't know if you guys are, have been seen or looked at that. That stuff looks great. Savage Crucible is killing it. 
I mean, let me tell you what. So I didn't, I only reviewed a couple of their figures because the internet was just getting flooded with, I mean, you know, everybody was getting their stuff at the same time. And that happens. You get spammed with Savage Crucible reviews. And I wanted to put my thoughts out on a couple of them. But this weekend, I mentioned I got some of the stuff that I didn't back in the Kickstarter. Two of those things were the accessory packs. And I haven't watched anything on them. I opened those up and I was blown away at what they have inside the accessory packs for Savage Crucible. Like they went above and beyond and not didn't just have armor pieces. They had like full castings of limbs and, you know, forearms. Like so like three or four head sculpts, shields. Now the cape, the cape my wife made. But like rather than making this piece right here a, a piece of armor that slips on and off. No, they just put a whole leg in there. Like, this bottom half of the leg is in the accessory pack. It's huh. freaking crazy. Forearms, it's not just armor that'll come off, right? No, you just put, I mean, I think it will come off, but they, they put you a whole forearm in there. It's crazy. Basically, if you get, like, the Lemurian slate or just a couple of torsos and head, like, just torsos, right? you can basically build a figure from the accessory kits if you have a torso. Really, really cool, but I was I was thrown, blown away by that because they are the kits are a little more expensive than just your standard accessory pack. And there's a lot of cool stuff in there. Well, I, yeah, I think expanding to all indie toys in general is helpful too because you know A Walk isn't the only brand suffering from that. Like, sure, we we know about Savage Crucible and Four Horsemen and things like that, but again, trying to reach that that casual audience is, is incredibly important. And the more people that are out there talking about it or explaining lore or being like, look at this cool thing I got. I, I think that that's just super helpful. And the fact that you're passionate about it, uh, I think that goes a long way. I appreciate that. Yeah. There's so much cool stuff out there and it's, um, <clears throat> it's, it's easier than ever. I'm not saying it's easy because the folks at Spiro and Savage Crucible and that they put in the work to get uh, <clears throat> get these figures made. But uh, like it's easier than ever to get into that, thanks to things like Kickstarter, Backer Kid, Indiegogo, all these methods to get the funding to do it. So, I, But if you're not in that world, if you're not looking through Kickstarter for action figures, and you may, you may never know. I mean, I still run into people uh, that, that are like, oh, I didn't know about this Animal Warriors of the Kingdom thing. Um, I introduced a friend of mine to it because I'm like, they're like, oh, I wish we had some action figures that I wasn't worried about my kids playing with and stuff like that. I'm like, bro, Action Force, sturdy as hell. AWOC, if they like animal stuff, it's sturdy. It's like your kids can play with these. Love Mythic Legions. I think they're beautiful collector figures that adults can fart around with and pose and do cool stuff with. But it may not be a playable figure for a 10 year old, right? You know, um, and that's again not a diss to Mythic Legions, it's the audience that they built, right? Um, the customization and, and, and all that. But yeah, like I can, I've got a friend with a nine year old kid that he walks around with his desert rat figure everywhere. Like I sent, I sent Tony a picture that I was like, this figure's like all jacked up on the table, coffee table. I'm like, just so you know. He's basically my nephew, but not really. Uh, he play. He takes Desert Rat with him everywhere he goes. Loves it. But they can oh, yeah. play with these and not, you know, not feel like you're gonna snap them apart. Adam Greg, he's uh, he's asking, uh, what do you think of the new Figura Obscura, and do you hope the retailer version will look like? That was, uh, I didn't get it, and that's the one part of Mythic Legions that I. I try to get is the figure obscure stuff, mm -hmm. but it, it like launched the day I was going to this con and I'm like, I, I don't want to just the day I got the Savage Crucible stuff. And I was like, well, shit, I just spent my budget, right. That I sent on the Savage Crucible, but it didn't scream at me as something I want. I think they look amazing, mm -hmm. but I just don't know if I have a, if they talk, speak to me and something as I want to collect it. But I mean, I love the figure obscure stuff, and I came into it late. I've only got, I got Monkey King, Red Death, and Jacob Marley, and they're freaking beautiful figures. So, oh, the yeah. figure figure obscure stuff is great for custom writers because they 
they tend to get these new parts added onto these figures. And then, you know, that's the thing people go crazy with like, Oh, I'm going to use that piece with this thing over here. And I'm, I don't, I'm not good at that. So I don't, my head doesn't work that way, but they, they, they look happen. beautiful. Ted, Ted in, in like three weeks, and they're like, man, I wish I would have got that figure on the screen. Probably. probably. It, does, it does it every time. Probably. Like, yeah. It got so bad, like, I would buy two of them. Like, because I, I, I try to try to have like one of everything. And then yeah. I, for a while, I had bought a second one. He goes, man, I really wish I would have got this one. <laughs> and I, I had bought one because I was going to give it to him for Christmas. I'm like, ah, here you go, man. I already got yeah. you. I knew, I knew you were going to want it. <laughs> I got you. Yeah, I, I know what's going to happen. I'm going to see them at a show or something. And I don't know those guys like that. I've talked to them. You know, I'm not close to those guys. We, You, you know what I mean. But uh, but typically when I see them at a show, I end up with something. And I think if I see that set in person, I'm, I'm probably not going to be able to pass it up. Um, retailer version or not. But I, for now, uh, I think it's beautiful. But I did not... Order. Yeah, I mean, my my assumption is going to be they that they will not be a, a two pack. They they will be two separate figures uh, when they do the retail release. Um, that's yeah, I think that's probably a smart way to do it. Um, I'm no businessman, so they can do whatever they want. But I think I'm not either. <laughs> if, if they if they release those separately, um, I think I I would definitely get Anubis. Um, I would I would absolutely get Anubis if I saw it at a at a con or something separate. Not not a fan of Bestet. Not as much, but I know folks that that will like take that female mold and use those parts to do some cool customs with for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of people in the chat pretty much agree with you that they would rather have Anubis. Uh, Robert, let's see what he says about the chat. He says, uh. Anubis and Bastet are not impressed. Uh, they're okay, and I'm and I'm an Egyptian nut. So, maybe. no, the and, and the accessories like people are going to go crazy. There's some killer oh, accessories. Oh yeah, like, yeah. Uh, so I went through there. So I went through all the pictures because obviously I'm like, you know, we sell for horsemen. I just I want to see what they're what they're doing, and I'm like like all the all the stuff that you get with them. Like no matter what it is now, like, they're just like stepping up that game when it comes to. Mm-hmm. Like their accessory pieces, swab, extra head sculpts, hands, weapons, just it's, it's, yeah. That's that, that Monkey King figure is one of the one of the prettiest figures like ever made. That it's, it is a gorgeous figure with a lot of. And I'm not a big accessory guy because I'm not a big toy photography guy. So right. a lot of times, like a lot of the accessories, I'll put whatever I want on it, and then I'll never see the accessories again. So so it wasn't enough in that Anubis set to or that. Uh, Egypt set to, to really make me want it, but I know folks will go crazy for it. So I'm glad for them. If they like it, I'm glad it's made. Uh, yeah, Sam Newsman says, oh, yeah, since the OG Krampus uh, has been all in. And I, that's the one. I think I have I have the second version. I don't have the black Krampus. And I really, I really want to get that one, but like, everywhere I've looked, it's like $100, like $100 plus. Yeah, I think I, I love the Krampus. I love the. I, I wish I would have gone in on uh, Headless Horseman, either version, like uh, whatever it is. But the one I really miss out on when before I knew a damn thing about Mythic Legions is their Egalus. If I see an Egalus at a reasonable price, I want that figure so bad. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that's that's the one that I want to get my hands on. Uh, yeah. or, you know, headless horseman that 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 probably by far like i mean like straight up hands down was like the figure to have like, yeah. in both very in both variants honestly the the original release and then the uh, updated like glow in the dark one I mean, that thing is beautiful yeah that's that's that was that was probably right when i really first started like really hearing or getting into Mythic Legions at all is right after the Headless Horseman launched. And listen, you all know if you miss the window for ordering it, you know, prices go through the roof. So it it is a the <laughs> so Patrick uh uh from Riot Press Toys is at a at a show this week and he posted up or sent me a picture and posted it up of him at at a convention, I think in Florida. And uh right in the background was the 
headless horseman. And I was like, I want to message him so bad and just say, take that off the shelf. I want it. But, and I know he would do it. He would do it for me. But, uh, uh Patrick Thomas Parnell, Riot Press. I don't know if you guys know who he is, but, uh, <clears throat> anyway, yeah, it, it, it's always tempting me every show I go to when I see that big headless horseman box up there. Uh, let's see. Northern Nomad asks if I'm a radio host by profession. I swear to you, I assure you I am not. I did many years ago go to an open mic for a country music station. Uh, long live country music. I don't care what any of y'all say. Um, uh, and failed miserably at the audition. I never had a chance, but it was for a show called Crying, Loving, Laughing, or Leaving. And uh, perfect. And I, I auditioned for that, and it was the worst thing I've ever tried to do. Hilariously bad, but I did it, and um, never again. But no, I am not a radio host. So in you any need way. to cry, that and is, laugh, and they told you to leave. Oh yeah, I, I I could see the guy. So we ha I had to do it like in the in the booth, right? So <laughs> what they did is <clears throat> nobody cares about this. Why are we talking about this? <laughs> no, um, I mean, why not? Uh, we this, this is the so side sit, of Cato that they don't get. Yeah, I sat in this production booth. The producer was on the other side of it. He fed me some lines, and he was like, "Here's what I need you to do. I need you to lead into uh, this the song." And you know how radio is. You know they talk all the way through the intro of a song and then shut up right before the song starts. And they basically just said, "Do that." You know, talk about this up until the song. And I, man, it was the worst thing i've ever done was not prepared there was no reason for me to be there and uh but it was fun and i did it and you know if you you, you you failing is just you know just as fun sometimes as uh as winning it was great but the gambit was a gift from a friend and uh it's that's a fantastic figure especially after watching x-men 97 makes you oh yeah remember, remember the name have you have you been uh <clears throat> i'm assuming you you've watched the the, the whole show you, 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 you oh yeah right it's now? it's outstanding i think the only the only thing they missed the boat on on that show it should have aired on disney plus on saturday mornings i mean that they are missing that opportunity. You can still watch it anytime you want. Why release it on Wednesday? Release it yeah. Saturday mornings at like 9 a.m. Yeah. And let it go. Like bring that back. Bring some Saturday morning cartoons back. Well, I was going to ask, because uh, we all probably have like a favorite episode, and I'm sure everyone's favorite episode is roughly the same. Um, I, I, I'm torn on two, uh, but Cato, without, without any spoilers, which was your uh, favorite episode? My favorite episode, I, I don't know, man. I, based on where they're going, uh, the season finale got me. Like, if they're going where I think they're going, no the season finale much. got me. I'm not, I'm not going to spoil it, but that that because I was hoping for it because that was like the things they did was pure, you know, a, a mixed bag of late '80s, early '90s. Uh, X Men comics, and that was my wheelhouse back when I was collecting, like most of us, right? Uh, and they 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 stirred up, you know, how things happen. They mixed in a few storylines, probably at least what, four different comic book storylines throughout those episodes. Mm -hmm. But based on how the show, how the season finale ended, that's my favorite episode. There was there was one name that was spoken at the very end that I was like, "You sons of bitches, you did it!" You know, I was like, "That's that's where I wanted them to go." So, uh, with the sheer number of cameos that are in these last couple episodes and and earlier, mm -hmm. they could bring back most of the Fox Kids and Beyond animated series and wreck DC's ass. For, a, or for quite a long time. I know there are folks out there that were like, I'm not watching anything on Disney Plus, or they heard what they did to Morph, and, yeah. and were like, oh, that's, you know, woke nonsense or whatever. Um, and I, I get it. I can understand that there's a whole crowd out there that feels that way. Uh, I, I I can assure you um, it was done with, a, with as much respect oh, yeah. as you could have and not... Absolutely 
feel in any certain. I mean, okay, if you're gonna if you're gonna complain about morph, right? And I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna stereotype here for a minute. The folks that complain about morph, you could also the other side of that could complain about Nightcrawler and how they treated his character because they really did Nightcrawler the right way. Right. right. They didn't shy away from him being, you know, very uh, religious, very Catholic. They did. They treated that well. So and I can honestly only think of and it's not even worth talking about. Just I'm telling you to watch it. Do it. Get over okay. yourself. It's enjoy the show. Uh, Matthew Matson, my wife demanded we watch X-Men 97. Yes. Uh, we had just finished watching the entire OG series with our daughter. Hell yeah. Oh, very nice. Got to, man. You just. Just roll right into the new one. Yeah, and then I said my, my only my only complaint about like that first episode was they should have started with previously on X Men. Oh and man, re yeah. Recap that last like that last part of the series would have been good. Not what no. I have, I'm having a Mandela effect right now. I feel I feel like they did. Maybe maybe I thought they did. I mean they they <laughs> did recap it in a way, but they did not start the episode with previously on X Men. Yeah. I, I something got ruined for me not that long ago. Uh, it was I, I think I shared it to a few folks, but someone played the Whitney Houston uh, "Whatever You Want from Me" by Whitney Houston mm -hmm. over the top of the X Men theme, and I was like, "You sons of bitches!" That's all I hear now. Whatever you want from me, I'm giving you everything. Uh, what do you want to promote to the humans out there in YouTube land? I just want folks to have a good time, collect some toys, hang out chill out people and you know there's there's nothing there's nothing to worry about just all of us are grown-ass people buying toys so just have some fun with it you know i follow me on the socials listen to sam news man go follow inu tabi for gi joe news um love you guys man and uh, I appreciate you guys even asking me to be here. So it's my honor. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. We're, we're happy to have you, man. Yeah. <laughs>